assistant professor at NERSC with Dr. Yasser. So uh, in my talk, I had to remove some robotic parts since Dr. Yasser already presented in those areas. So I will totally focus my talk on the part where we acquire brain signals and we apply them to control some devices. So uh, in my, uh, before starting my presentation, I will just give you an overview that what is a brain computer interface. A brain computer interface is a direct communication between uh, your brain and with the device that you are controlling. So there is no indirect method like your spinal cord or some other measures like your body movement to control a device. You are getting a signal directly from your brain and you are translating that signal into a machine command and then you are controlling that device. So basically this guy, Hansberg, he was the first one to decode a brain signal and translate it into some kind of a command. So what he did basically that he placed a metal electrode at the time it was the electrode was made up of copper. So he placed that copper electrode on the top of the skull of a cat and he broke the paw of that cat. And what the signal he got, he called it that it was a pain stimulation in result of that breaking of the paw. So that was the first ever recorded brain signal uh, from any kind of a living animal. So uh, what a real brain computer interface looks like? Basically this is the overall architecture in which we have a hardware in which a device records the brain signal and then there is a software part that translates that signal into a machine command. And then we interpret that signal for the control of a device and we send it back to the user so that he can know that his uh, translation is working properly or not. But sometimes the brain does not give a proper brain signal. So in that case, we have to give some kind of a therapy to the brain so that the brain can stimulate and it can generate the brain signal. So overall, there is a, some kind of a misinterpretation between nerve machine interface and brain computer interface. So whenever we are talking about a brain computer interface, the brain signals are directly decoded from the brain only. But in case of a nerve machine interface, the brain signals are sent to the nerve part and then the signals are sent to the device for control. Okay. So when there is a brain computer interface, it is divided into multiple type of categories. So first one is a, you are reactive voluntarily generating some kind of a brain activity like by moving your hand or moving your leg or you are thinking of something, then that is, a, that is an active brain computer interface. And lastly, yes, the third one is basically a passive brain computer interface. What is it? A passive brain computer interface is when you are listening to something and you are feeling sleepy. So this kind of a response is an involuntary response that is, that is not under your control and you cannot do anything about it. So each type of these activities have some application and we can use them to generate some kind of a command for control of some devices. Okay, so this is basically the overall BCI domain. So if I am totally talking about a patient, so whenever a person who is locked down below his neck, he cannot move either his eye or he cannot move any part of his body, then and only then a brain computer interface can be used for that person. So mostly this kind of technology is used for a locked in syndrome patient who cannot move any part of his body. Okay. So the hardware that is used, there are two types of the hardware. One is invasive, the other one is non-invasive. So the first device is electrocorticography in which there are metal electrodes and they are implanted directly into your brain. So I asked my students, how many of you want to use this kind of technology? Only one of my students was uh, willing to implant this kind of a device in her brain. And she said that if that can improve my life, I really want to use that. But other than that, maybe none of you want to use any kind of this kind of technology for yourself. So what is the solution? The solution is basically this kind of a device that is electroencephalography. So this device records the neuronal signals of the brain directly from the scalp of the head. 
So these signals are weak. Obviously, in comparison to electrophoretic process, these signals are very weak. But still, we are getting something, and we can do something with those signals. And secondly, just like Dr. Yasser said, there is another device that is function linear infrared spectroscope. So in that case, we have a source, a near infrared source that shoots light into the brain, and there is a detector that detects this kind of a light. And what we do, basically, the some part of the light gets scattered in the brain, and some part is received on the detector part. So whenever we receive this kind of a signal, we can translate it into the blood flow in the brain. So if we are in the relaxed state, the blood flow will be less. And if we are thinking something, the blood flow in our brain increases. So functional infrared spectroscopy decodes the increase in the blood flow in the brain as a result of the neuronal firing. So what we can do, what type of device should we go for brain to brain interface that is completely up to us. So EEG is basically very fast kind of this kind of technology for yourself. So what is the solution? The solution is basically this kind of a device that is electroencephalography. So this device records the neuronal signals of the brain directly pictures of EEG and FRS together in a meta classification and then what we can achieve, we can achieve is an increased number of commands for control and second is the improvement in the accuracy by which a person can control uh, a wheelchair even with an accuracy of 100%. So, there are four objectives for this uh, hybrid brain computer interface. The first one is the increase in the commands. The second one is the improvement in, in the classification accuracy. The third one is the reduction in the time for uh, command generation. And last one is basically the specific brain area detection from where the activity is being generated. Obviously, none of you wants to wear a cap that is bigger in size and you cannot even move your head by wearing that cap. So we need to locate a precise region in the brain from where the activity is generated. And if we can identify that region, we can just make a small cap or, or a small patch by which you can generate, uh, record your brain signal. So, Uh, I will just skip this part. So I will just, uh, okay, this is the setup. So we, we have currently a large number of electrodes and we can place them on the skull to record the activity. So the first task that I did was detection of a drowsiness for a driver who is driving a car. So this is a passive application. If a person is driving a car and he falls to sleep, obviously he is going to crash the car. So my first objective was, this was in collaboration with, uh, probably you have heard of Hyundai Motors, so this was a collaborative project, and uh, what they have given me the task is to minimize the brain region from where I can decode the drowsiness activity. So what I did basically was segment the brain regions into multiple parts, and try to, I investigated that which part is the most active. So my investigation, my results were that the left dorsolateral part is the most significant for uh, drowsiness activity. And you can just make a very small patch and you can just wear it on your head and you can decode the drowsiness activity. But the problem here was that it takes me around five seconds to record this activity. So uh, obviously five seconds is very slow and a problem, uh, and a person can crash a car in that time. But still, we are getting a signal. And currently, we are using a deep learning algorithm to improve this accuracy as well as the response time for this uh, drowsiness task. Secondly, uh, just like Dr. Yasser said, we have worked on the control of a drone and a wheelchair for uh, using the brain signal. So uh, I will just skip this algorithm since we have shorter time. So.
land on this black spot, probably we will not be able to land on the exact same spot. So, And for the second part, now you can see that the control has been improved by integrating two devices and this person will land on the exact same spot where he was asked him to do. the time for brain signal decoding. So uh, instead of going for some complex uh, mechanism, what we did, we squeezed in the electrode and uh, we used a, an approach that is known as vector phase analysis. And with that approach, instead of decoding the brain signal at two seconds, we were able to achieve the result at just one second. So by squeezing in the electrode and combining the features with EEG, we were able to reduce the decoding time. So I will just cut short this. Okay, uh, just at the end, I'm just going to show you one uh, more result of this autism result. Basically, Dr. Yasser already told you that we are working on this thing. And what we did, we gave a therapy using a robot. And my task was to investigate whether the brain activity is getting improved or not. So what I was able to find out that after receiving the therapy from the robot, the child's brain gets more stimulated. And over the period of time, he gets better and better. So his eye contact, his speech, and his body movement get synchronized with the commands that the robot is uh, giving, uh, giving the child. So overall, we are currently still working on this project, but hopefully we will achieve much better results. So uh, I will just skip this one. So in conclusion, I will just say that we need a brain-computer interface that is integrated, a hybrid brain-computer interface that can generate a real-time result, and it can look up into the brain at the precise level. Only then, and only then, can we able to commercialize this kind of a technology and we can use it for the therapeutic as well as for the control application. So, there are some people I would like to acknowledge. So that is all for the presentation. Thank you.